Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are at Andre's Confiserie Suisse. We are going to go into their kitchen and make one of their signature dishes along with an extraordinary dessert. Before we do that, we're going to talk to one of the owners and chefs, Rene Bollier. Rene, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. Yeah, thanks for, for coming. We're excited that you're here. Well, all right. Andre's is a Kansas City tradition. You've been here 55 years. Let's talk about how that tradition began. Uh, it began with my grandfather and my grandmother. Uh, they were living in Switzerland, and my grandfather was a master pastry chef who uh, really wanted to own his own business and um, didn't have the means to do it in Switzerland. It was just too expensive. And uh, so he started looking for other possibilities and the U.S. was, was one. And basically the U.S. provided a situation where someone who didn't have a large amount of money to invest could still achieve ownership in a business. So um, The American his, dream. Yep, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And his uh, brother was here in Kansas City working for a watch company and um, said, you know, that Kansas City's market was wide open, it was a great city, a growing city, and uh, therefore that, uh, he um, uprooted both my, my grandmother and my father, who was, my father was five at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, they immigrated in 1955, and uh, he worked a variety of jobs for a few months in Kansas City, and then was able eight months afterwards to open the first very small um, section of Andre's. Which is at this location at 50th and Main. It is. It's always been at this it's location. Been here. The building slowly grown over time. Uh, the original building actually sat on our parking lot. It was uh, moved to this location. And um, then we just, over time, added on and expanded. So you're the third generation. Your father, Marcel, continued the tradition that your grandfather, Andre, began. So what kind of special training have you experienced to be chef now? You know, I, for one, started at a very young age, as did my father, working with his parents or my parents, learning the trade. Uh, I can remember as early as six years old begging my father to let me come in with him uh, at four or five in the morning. And um, I, from that time on, I worked in production. Uh, in the beginning, doing simple things like cutting sure. out cookies. Uh, as I got a little bit older and a little bit stronger, I actually got put on the cleaning crew for many years, which gave me a great appreciation of what the clean is expected of the cleaners and what's necessary, and we really focus on cleanliness here in Andres. So um, you've really, I mean, literally from the ground up, you know all the pieces and parts to the operation. As you said, cleanliness is a part of what needs to happen here, in addition to the skill that you now have achieved. So, Dad, you must have known early on. Not everyone does, and that's fine. This is what you wanted to do. Yeah, I really, there was never any question in my mind. I always knew I wanted to be a part of this business. Uh, some of that came down to my relationship with my parents. I sure. had a lot of fun working with them. Uh, I knew that we could have a great working relationship together. Even at a young age, I knew that I could work well with my dad uh, and my mom. You've and got, uh, you've got some wonderful family, so it. I do. I do. I'm very lucky. Yes, you are. And um, and I love I love the production side of it. I love the business side of it. It's a lot of fun. But my true passion comes from being able to dig my hands into a a big table of bread dough or create different pastries or um, and in my training and then after working at Andre's I um, so you you worked here ever since you were six years old in all the different pieces and parts from the simplest up to now obviously the very complicated where did you go for your professional training in addition to on the job uh, I actually spent time in Switzerland and uh, my father felt like it was extremely important for me to not only see what we do at Andre's but get a broad knowledge of what other businesses were doing mm -hmm. and um, there really is what has made Andre successful over the years is staying very traditional staying traditionally Swiss um, keeping with Swiss quality creating Swiss products and so he felt like 
the best opportunity I'd have to be successful in Andres would be to go over to Switzerland so and train over roots, there. So back to your roots. Exactly. Do you, do you speak Swiss? I, I do. So tell me, you went to work for other pastry makers in Switzerland. How was their operation different from, or what, what was the learning curve there? What was... You know, the amazing thing, you know, the basics I felt, felt like, and I still feel right like here. I had a very good sure. knowledge of the basics of the things that every pastry shop does. Um, the great thing about pastry shops in Switzerland is everyone has their specialties. Uh, they all create things differently. There's so many in Switzerland that they really do try to separate themselves. They don't just try to make the same thing over and over so again. Good so it's for, how many different places did you work there? Because that meant you were picking up specialties and unique pieces and parts along the way. It did. It did. I, I actually I had the opportunity to work at three different pastry shops. And then I actually got to work in a factory that builds machinery to produce chocolate candies. Very expensive, very uh, high-tech machinery. And I, um, it's machinery that we use in the United States. And unfortunately, when those machines have broken down in the past, we've had to bring mechanics in from Switzerland oh to fix Lord. them. So uh, my dad's thought process, which was extremely great that he, he had your dad is visionary. this foresight mm -hmm. is that if I could learn some of you know the basics about the machine about the machinery that we use then I'd have the ability to maybe fix some of the minor problems. Is so that true? It is true. Oh. It is true. Okay. It, gave, it gave me a great knowledge. I I was very lucky in Switzerland because the relationships that my grandfather and my father created um, enabled me to do so much more than I would have been able to if I would have just showed up in Switzerland and started applying for jobs. So you had some special opportunities. I, I know that we have believed on some level this is a Swiss consulate. How? You have some diplomatic relationships with, how does that work? It is an honorary consulate, honorary so consulate. Uh, there are seven in the Midwest, I think it's seven, mm -hmm. uh, and then there is the consulate in Chicago, which uh, is staffed by a professional diplomat. Mm -hmm. uh, my father is the honorary consul for Switzerland in the Kansas, in the Kansas City area. Uh -huh. and. Um, like I said, it's honorary, so he has to sign some documents here and there, show up for different events at times, but uh, it's not so a paid position. When you so. have visitors coming here, do you, you sometimes function as honorary diplomats? We do. We do. So, so nice. You've preserved not only the foods, the culture, the connection to the country. Mm -hmm. So how nice for us to have this here in Kansas City and preserving, you know, America is that melting pot, but we continue to celebrate, you know, the heritage of the people who have built this country and you're doing a wonderful job. Oh, thank you very much. No, I, I, I count myself very lucky to be a part of this business and a part of this family because it really, um, I can't take a ton of credit for it. It really is an exceptional story. Of, um, but you have a lot of responsibility and to, that, to carry it forward, you and, and, yep. you're, and you're doing your part of that. And with three daughters and two of them just brand new, yep. there's the next generation ready for training and continuing the tradition that your grandfather began here. Exactly. So, Renee, I think we should go into the kitchen. All right. And tell us what we're going to make. We are going to make volo. Um, which is a mushroom cream, or it's, I'm sorry, a chicken and mushroom cream sauce mm -hmm. uh, that's poured into a puff pastry shell. We're gonna make a broiled tomato and steamed broccoli to go along with it. And then for dessert, we're gonna have a pot de creme with a caramel sauce, a homemade caramel sauce, and a rosetta whipped cream with some nice uh, chocolate decoration on top. Okay, I think we need to go in the kitchen, and I think you need to come with us. This week we are in the kitchen at Andre's Confiserie Suisse 
we have talked with their executive chef and owner, Renee Boyer, and now we are in the kitchen to prepare a signature dish. Chef, what are we making? We are making volo, which again is a uh, it is a mushroom or a chicken and mushroom cream sauce with some white wine, uh, and then it's poured into a puff pastry shell. And what we're serving with it is uh, steamed broccoli and uh, broiled tomato with a little bit of cheese on top. And have a wonderful, and you know we're having a, a celebrity taster come in for the final word on how delicious this is. Now, you have created what we always talk about is the mise en place. Would you please tell us what is here, Chef? I will, I will. Well, of course, we have butter. And butter, to me, is, is king. Yes, it is. Uh, a little unsalted, bit of, I'm assuming? Unsalted. Okay. Unsalted. Yes. And this is actually butter that has a higher fat content, uh, more for our pastries than for in the kitchen. Uh, we have just some general all-purpose all flour, yes. some finely chopped celery, mm. and then we have a mixture of herbs and spices. So what that is, is it's, uh, it's like a poultry seasoning okay. mix that we mix, and then salt and white pepper. Uh, over here, this is a seasoning salt that we actually import from Switzerland. We use it on many of our vegetables. So we've kosher. got kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper. Fresh cracked pepper, some more butter, and that's for um, sauteing our mushrooms okay. that are going to go in the sauce. And gorgeous, gorgeous broccoli. So we par, or, uh, we blanch the broccoli in a little bit of salt water just to get the cooking process going. And we're going to put it in the oven and finish it off in there with our broiled tomato. And what do we have over our tomato? The tomato right now we just sliced in half and we put a thin uh, slice of butter on top just to give it some rich richness and. Uh, some nice creamy flavor of butter. And what is this? This is a mixture of cream and milk. This is what's gonna uh, make our bolo sauce really rich um, and silky smooth. And then behind that, we have some white wine and then uh, an ingredient that again is imported from Switzerland uh, called Maji. It is very, very similar to soy sauce, but it's not soy based. Yeah, okay. And it basically increases the flavor of anything and everything you make. And it's something that in Europe you find quite often. So really, there are some products and ingredients here that are directly from And there are, and then there's of course the Gruyere cheese. Gruyere and cheese. Gruyere cheese is like again is king to me. I, I love Gruyere it's cheese. It's so rich, it, and it, but, but it doesn't get in the way of other flavors. It doesn't, it, it just, doesn't. And it's, it's what I grew up on, and yep. uh, and I just love it. I love the flavor of it. Now, man, we, we buy it by the 100 pound wheel. I'll bet and, you do. Um, we use lots and lots of Gruyere here. Okay, we're gonna get cooking, Chef. Okay. And um, what's first? What's first? Well, what we're going to do so it all hopefully comes out at the same time is we'll go ahead and get our vegetables in the okay. oven. So we are going to take just a little bit of butter and uh, just just give this broccoli a little bit of butter just so it also has some richness. And then we're going to take a little bit of our seasoning salt and just sprinkle that on. From Switzerland. From Switzerland. Yes. And we're going to take that. So getting the vegetables in the oven at the same time. Set that over there. And then on our tomatoes, I'm going to take a little bit of the salt and pepper mixture and just sprinkle the tomatoes with that. And then a little bit of the Gruyere cheese on top of that. And so a little butter, a little Gruyere cheese, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And beginning with a fabulous tomato. And that is it. And uh, tomatoes will go right in the oven uncovered. And the broccoli we're actually going to go ahead and cover up. Okay, chef. Vegetables are seasoned and in the oven, and now time for the now sauce. Now it's time for the sauce. Okay. So what we have here is our mise en place, and we also have some diet or some sliced mushroom and some cubed chicken that we baked off earlier. And basically, to bake that chicken off, what we do is we take a brush and we cover it lightly with butter. We sprinkle it with salt, pepper, and that poultry seasoning again, and we bake it for about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes in a 400 degree oven, just so. So it's, uh, you don't want to overcook it, but... Um, no, because it, it's amazingly tender. Now, do you cook it with the skin and bone, or are these boneless These are skinless? boneless, skin, skinless breasts. Okay. All and, right. Uh, and those are what I call button mushrooms. Button mushrooms, small button mushrooms. Right, this is another thing that we remind our home cooks, and that is to get your pans warm first. You do. Before you put ingredients in them. If you're putting a protein in these pans, you want it to get hot. And a good way to check it is if you put a spoonful of water in your pan, it should just float on top of the pan. It shouldn't bubble right away. It shouldn't fall apart. It should just literally float on the pan. And that, that's how you can tell if your pan's really good and hot and your food's not going to stick to it. 
for this, it's not as I much of an issue. I learned something. I've not heard that about water before. Yep. Great, great lesson. Thank yep. you, Chef. Okay. So uh, this, it's not as much of an issue, and we're using some uh, some butter, which is going to inhibit anything from sticking. So we'll go ahead and get our mushrooms going. So we'll put our butter in there. Yes. And then we're going to grab our mushrooms. Once that butter starts to melt down. The butter is the ready. The butter is ready. Oh, ready. We're going to go ahead and put our mushrooms in there. And basically what we want to do is we just want to cook our mushrooms through and uh, it's going to release some of the water in there so that we don't end up having our sauce be too watery. All so right. And then so we're going to add a little bit of uh, white wine. All right, so we have butter, white wine, mushrooms. And then a little bit of our seasoning salt. Again, the Swiss seasoning salt. Uh -huh. Where can the home cook get that Swiss you seasoning know, salt? Do you sell it here? We or? do not sell it here. And uh, we use one that is MSG free. Thank uh, you. There is one in, on, in grocery stores that you can get called Aromat which is almost exactly the same. It does have MSG in it. So uh, some people have an aversion to that. Or so sensitivity, sensitivity yeah. to MSG, yeah. so they don't uh, necessarily want to use that. But uh, so, and then in this pan, we'll go ahead and get our sauce ready. So, okay, it's definitely hot. I'm gonna pull that up. Another thing for the home cook to remember, if your pan's a little hotter than you would prefer at that moment, Take it all Pull it off. Higher. Pull it off, but it's not necessarily bad. A little no, brownness no, to your yeah. butter yeah. is a good thing. So we'll go ahead and add our celery. And what we're doing with our celery is we just want to get it aromatic so that it starts having a really nice flavor. You're not trying to cook it too much. Just basically a minute in the pan is good enough. Okay. And once you get that done, we're going to go ahead and add our flour and create a roux. And we're not wanting our flour really to take any color. We're just wanting so, to roast it just a little bit. Right. Yeah, interesting that you added the celery before you added the flour, and it's just for the flavor. For the flavor, yep. Uh -huh. We want it to become nice and aromatic. So we'll, we'll just roast that flour just for about a minute, now that our pan's cooled down a little bit. And uh, once we have let it go for a minute, we're going to start to add our liquid. And, and it should look about like that. It should look about like that. Okay. Uh, you don't want to add the liquid too fast because you don't want the flour to be totally raw when you uh, when you start adding your liquid. But so once it gets to that point, we'll go ahead and we're going to add our, our liquid or our cream and milk mixture uh, in thirds. And basically that's going to help us inhibit getting lumps in our yeah. sauce. Lumps are not desirable. So, no. we're, so we'll go ahead and mix that in. Before we add two more things. What percent would you say is milk and what? It's half and half. Half and half. Half and half. And adding it in parts is going to enable the sauce to start to thicken and work those lumps out. And uh, so you basically you add a third, you let it get nice and thick, and then you add another third, do the same thing again, and then we'll add our final third at the end along with our wine. You step around here. You're going to yeah. mix it. I, I need yeah. to be useful, yeah, you know? Yeah. Too. Great thing about mushrooms is they, they are very stable. They hold up to, yeah. to some meat. And um, for, like, for this instance, they have a lot of moisture in them. So the chance of them burning is slim to none. And basically, once those cook through and the water releases, we're going to go ahead and um, put them in a, in a sift to drain off some of that excess okay. water. So you use a little flavor, but also get the liquid out. Exactly. So it doesn't exactly. make the dish watery. We don't want, yeah, if we added it directly to the sauce, then we would add a tremendous amount of moisture, and uh, it wouldn't do anything for us. But look, we're just using two pans, we essentially, are. to make this happen. So we're going to go ahead and add about a third of the liquid again. So I'm going to this up a little bit now. Go ahead and dump that in and let that drain down. Okay, so we infuse some flavor and we're draining it, and it's going to be all ready for the mushroom and chicken sauce. It is. And what's important when you're making a, a, a white sauce of this nature is that you have to bring it to, uh, to a boil, and that's when the, the flour is going to react and really get to its. Uh, full thickening potential. We are going to go ahead and add the final portion of cream and milk because to our the, dish. Because the mixture has thickened and begun to boil a little bit, so the very last bit of and, cream and milk. And then we're going to go ahead and add our white wine and maji. Yes. 
which Marky again, again is similar to a soy sauce. Very similar. This soy sauce is a great substitute. And then we're also going to add our our spices and herbs. So okay. uh, salt, white pepper, marjoram, uh, savory. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so and once that's added, we're going to go ahead and let that come to a boil again, just to so it, it really gets to its full thickening potential. Uh, if it gets too thick, it's possible we might have to add a little bit more cream okay. or a little bit of milk to thin it out. Uh, if for some reason your sauce would be too thin, uh, the best thing to do is to take some milk, add a little bit of flour to the milk to create a slurry, and then slowly Add that to your sauce. Don't add too much at once because then Sometimes you might over thicken. Sometimes I'm going to do a little tiny strainer. And that's a good idea because if there are lumps in the, yeah. there, by the time it goes into the hot liquid, they will they be, will be lump, permanent lumps in your sauce. Right now we're waiting for all the flavors to finish infusing and its final stage of thickening. Then what do we do? Then we are basically, we're going to fold in our chicken and our mushrooms that have been draining over here. Uh -huh. uh, this is the perfect time to put our puff pastry shells in the oven. So the next step is to put the puff of pastry exactly. shells in the oven. Exactly. Because uh, you don't want them in the oven too long because obviously they could burn. Yes. But it's very important that they get really hot in there. One, okay. so that when you pour your sauce into the shell, it doesn't cool the sauce down. Yes. And two, um, if you, I mean, we produce these ourselves fresh. But uh, if you're buying them in a grocery store or at Andre's from the freezer section, then uh, it is possible that they have some moisture in them, so you want to crisp them back up. Okay. All right. So uh, we are going to, I think, we are at a good point where we'll go ahead and shove these back in the oven and we can check Enjoy our tomatoes. Our, yeah. our tomatoes are looking perfect. They should be right on time. And I'm okay. what, hope the broccoli is right so there too. Part of what we do is the timing issue it here is. when we prepare dishes. It is. Right. So once we add Smells that chicken heaven. and mushroom, heaven. what's important is that, uh, and we heat it through again. The chicken's fully cooked, the mushrooms are cooked, but you want the dish to be really hot. You don't, to me, one of the biggest downfalls of a dish, no matter how good it tastes, is if it comes out and it's lukewarm. And it doesn't work. So we'll and you've changed from a whisk to a spoon. To a spoon, and basically I don't want to break, I don't want the chicken or the mushrooms to get beat up in the sauce or start to break down. So basically I'm gonna add those and uh, gently fold them in so that we don't end up with shredded chicken, we end up with uh, nice chicken. We get a bite of chicken, we get a exactly. bite of chicken. So then we'll go ahead and add our mushrooms. And then, like I said, we're gonna let that everything heat through again. Okay, an important cooking utensil is, is your tasting spoon. It is, it is, and a one-use spoon. We only use it once, so. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Oh, oh, so we need to get a mushroom and a little pump. Oh. That's excellent. Just, in my opinion, just right. Needs to heat through a little bit more, but I like the, the flavor combinations. I love the celery, what the celery brings to the dish. I have to tell you, that is so unique. And the flavors are still happening. As yeah. I'm tasting it, the flavors are still happening in different parts of my tongue, a sign of a delicious and very interesting dish. I bet our celebrity taster's gonna like this one. I hope so. I, I hope just so. have a feeling he will. Okay, Chef, we eat with our eyes first, the Volo Vans. How do we plate it? Well, the great thing about this dish is there's so many colors that it, it makes it easy to plate and uh, easy to make look nice. So basically, we're gonna take our broiled tomato, which is gonna be really soft, really juicy, and we're gonna set Again, it right here. butter, cheese, salt, pepper, and in the oven. You just in, the oven. in the oven, that easy, that simple. Then we're gonna take our, bro our broccoli spears, and just fan them out right there on the plate. Look at that beautiful color. Now we know that right color there. is not only flavor, but nutrition. It is, okay. it is. So we have it all. And then we are gonna take our puff pastry shell. Which we should add again, you make here at Andre's. We make them at Andre's. Can, we buy, can we buy them here? Of course you can. Oh, okay. Of course you can. <laughs> and then now we are ready for our sauce. So basically we're gonna take a good ladle of our sauce. And we're basically just gonna put it into inside the shell. 
Just Drizzle just that over it. like yeah. that. Final step is we have to take a little half, put it on top. <laughs> and then we'll make sure that the edges of the plate are nice and clean and All it is ready to serve. It, that, is, that is a work of art and I noticed that you have chosen a white plate which essentially is the canvas for your artwork. Exactly. And it's a beautiful creation. And I'm just going to sneak over here and grab, you have decided to what would a meal be without dessert. Tell us what this beautiful dessert is, please. This is a caramel coat of cream. So it's a vanilla custard. We use uh, real vanilla beans to flavor it. And then we make a caramel sauce to go around the side. We put a rosette of whipped cream in the middle, and then we decorate it with some of our different chocolate decors, our dark chocolate Andre's label, and some milk chocolate uh, triangles that have our Andre's A on them. Thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. You have brought flavors from Switzerland here for us in Kansas City. We appreciate the great care that you take with what you do. Well, thank you very much. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Entrees. We have been in the kitchen preparing one of their signature dishes, and to, to taste this dish is TV news anchor WDAF <laughs> Channel 4. Wow. <laughs> Sounds impressive, huh? my, my business card is that long. Stop <laughs> Phil Witt, yeah, I know you have a frenetic schedule. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us and taste this food. You 30, how many years? Uh, I'm going on 32 years now going at Channel 4. Yes. On 32 years, and you know your tradition of excellence is matched at Andre's. They're on three generations of foliers. This is such a treat for me. What a great honor to come here and sample this food because I have so much respect for uh, Andre and Renee. Mm -hmm. and Marcel. They're just fabulous family. Fabulous. They run a great kitchen. And they run a great kitchen, and now we get to taste what they made in the kitchen. Chef, could you please tell us what you have prepared for our celebrity taster? This is a traditional Swiss dish. It's called volovo. Mm -hmm. So the, it's basically a chicken and mushroom white wine sauce. Mm -hmm. It's in a puff pastry shell. Mm -hmm. And we did a broiled tomato and a steamed broccoli to go along with it. Mm -hmm. And I understand. It's a dish that we've been making since the very beginning, 55 years ago. And it's my grandfather's recipe. And it's one that's always popular. Thank you for carrying on this tradition. Now we're going to taste it. Fabulous. All right, Bill. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. You. Look at Billy. that. Isn't it? It's, it's so beautiful, well, too. The colors mesh so well. Oh. You eat with your eyes first. That's what I understand. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to taste it as well. Oh, no. Oh, that piece. Mm, the aroma, too. <laughs> See, it's, it's a celebration for all of your senses. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. See how polite I'm being and waiting for you? Oh, it's heart. not going to last long. <laughs> Oh, Yum. the flavors just explode. And, I mean, you know, not in a fireworks nature, but they just explode in the mouth. You know, you really can delicate the how delicate the white wine is, but the chicken's so tender too. It can always be a problem with chicken. Can be spring. So light. And it's that combination. Of, it's a little sweet and savory. Yes. So it's it's everything. It, it's got it all. Sure. You know the other thing is it's a little reminiscent of an upscale chicken pot pie, mm -hmm. which just screams comfort food. Sure. And this is comforting. Mm -hmm. It's always been one of my favorites. Pot chicken pot pie. Mm -hmm. Going back to my childhood, my mother made it, uh, and my daughter makes it an awesome pot pie too. So. Yes, you've got some talent in the family well, in the culinary uh, it, world, it, too. It, it is wonderful to have uh, foodies, uh, professional foodies mm -hmm. in But my wife and my uh, and my other daughter also are real food fanatics, too. And my son has even become a, a, a real food official in Ottawa as a, as a cook, too, you know, amateur cook. You know, so, 
my son too, and isn't that a wonderful thing for our children to care about, have a passion for, because at the end of the day, it's the quality of your health and life that's involved with this kind of food. The, the pastry, um, you know, can sometimes get overdone. Uh, this, of course, is not. It, it retains a uh, good moisture, uh, even though it's flaky. It retains a good moisture too, doesn't it? And sometimes it gets that dry, mm -hmm. brittle. This is perfect. You know, they've been doing it for 15, five years. So I think they have it down to a fine science. What do you? Yes. I think they've made it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've mastered it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know, he uses all the Bolliers use all natural ingredients. They care about the product. They've done a wonderful job of taking care of the product along with their cooking. And at the end of the day, if you don't start out with good, good product, you're not going to get the result. So we've got the steamed broccoli. See how bright green it is. He's taking care to preserve the flavor and the nutrients and the tomatoes. So it, it makes the meal brighter, fresher, lighter, but you're still enjoying this because you don't eat um, pastry every day. So we're having our own little celebration. Yes. My, my daughter Blair, who is the chef, uh, said, you know, uh, the name of the dish, the title, means windblown. No, I didn't know that. So it makes sense. You have this nice uh, kind of flaky pastry that's, uh, that reminds you of uh, a breeze. That's a good description of this because at first blush you would think this would be a heavy dish and and it's not. All right, Phil, you've had your lunch, but you but you can't be at Andre's without dessert. More specifically, chocolate. So we don't want you walking away disappointed or neglected. I think oh. that's a violation of federal law. Something like that. <laughs> so, Chef, what, what do you recommend for dessert? Well, today I am going to serve you all a pot de crème. That's a, so it's a vanilla custard. It has a caramel sauce on top with a rosette of whipped cream in the middle and then uh, oh two uh, chocolate oh. medallion with two <laughs> triangles of milk chocolate uh, for decoration. This is oh, decoration. I have a feeling we're gonna be eating the decoration. All right, Phil. Just... Chef, how old is this recipe? In, in this recipe there? is actually very new. It's, it's creme brulee, same basic recipe, but this is something we just introduced within the last two years at Andre's. This is something that I always have loved. Creme brulee is one of my favorite desserts. Mm -hmm. So we made a homemade caramel sauce to go over it to kind of replicate what a creme brulee would be like. Very good. Okay, well. Very innovative. <laughs> very innovative, and we'll probably munch the, but that's what I love about Andre's is you still have the classical, traditional chocolates and pastries, but they up, they still update as they go along. Mm -hmm. All right, Bill, you have to take the first. Oh, my goodness. Don't look at that horrible. It's sort of like a form of a candy bar and I better taste the chocolate. Is that and, and again, the flavors just blend so well together. Uh, far from one dimensional. <laughs> that has about 12 dimensions in it. Oh, but look how he's put them together. So creating his own version of creme brulee. That's, I know. That is such so a doing good, the rich caramel, chocolate. Doing the caramel in, in place of what would be, you know, they have that torch. Sure. That they use. Mm -hmm. So he's he's provided the own caramelization for the dessert. Don't miss, don't miss that crunchiness at all. Mm. Yeah, normally comes oh with creme brulee. But oh, I'll tell you. Oh my what. gosh, it does. It, it tastes like creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Only the texture is entirely different. It stays creamy throughout. Very smooth. Very oh. smooth. And it all melts together very, very, very well. Luscious. Just luscious. never tasted it. I'd say, like it. I'd say this is a good addition to the Andre's menu. Yes, I do. Well, Phil, mouthful of chocolate. Can I come back all the time? And we can do stories every day at Andre's. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> Well, that makes it more precious because... Then I spend the rest of the day in the gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to thank you. 
for taking time out to be our celebrity taster. You've, you're a, a tradition in Kansas City on television for news. You've not only spent over 30 years delivering wonderful, credible news to us, but you've gone beyond that desk into the community. I've been a part of some of the work you've done for other organizations that are not for profit. You've really invested yourself in this community, and I want to thank you for what you've done. Thank you for being here and spending time at Andre's with me in the kitchen. Great, it was a great joy being part of a tradition of this establishment, Andre's, and then joining you on this wonderful new tradition that you're creating with Bonnie. <laughs> thank you, Philip. Mm -hmm.